Hello, this will be a quick video about the new update 1.2 of Gaia. This is a major overall of the software, so it's good to know what the improvements and changes are. Here I am in the node graph editor of the software. As you can see, the interface is already different from the previous version. Here on the top, we still have the same menu for, for saving and loading, but we have a new option for the resolution. Now we can choose the tessellation resolution of a mesh that is displayed here in the viewport. By default, it's set to auto, but we can also increase it as we like. The resolution itself is the same as before. Here on the bottom left, we have a toolbox with all the nodes. And uh, the graph is more or less still the same. It has a new style. But now we can create multiple graphs and uh, connect them with each other. By clicking on this plus icon, add new graph. You can create a new graph, for example, I call it graph 2, create a graph. And as you can see now, I have a completely blank graph to work with. If I, for example, place down a perlin, you can see that here I have my perlin. And in the first graph, I have a mountain. We can use this for creating very complex terrains that it will be too chaotic to create only in one graph, but we can also use it for divide the workflow by, for example, creating in the first graph the basic shape and in the second graph we can create the texture, for example. Here on the right we have the same node properties as the previous version. However, we also have the build panel where you can export our terrain. The options are exactly the same and I'll show you how to use it when we create our terrain in the next video. For the preferences of the software, there are some new stuff to look at. For example, here we have some new styles for the connections of the node. And for my settings, I left everything at default aside from the show node categories in context menu. This basically, if it is enabled, you can right click in the graph and all the nodes will appear. For the navigation, I use the left mouse button, middle mouse to pen, and I also inverted the vertical rotation axis. Viewport quality, we have new options for the tessellation but the same as, as choosing it uh, here on the top. We also have a render engine quality that is more precise. And now we have, uh, for example, HIG means uh, 60 FPS plus four pair of anti-aliasing. That's what I use. If you have a very powerful GPU, you can also use the ultra setting. And then we have a path for uh, saving your file. For the nodes uh, themselves, uh, we have uh, a bunch of new nodes and the categories uh, changed. As you can see here, if you right click, we now have uh, primitives. These are the most simple primitives that you can use. For example, the Perlin, the Voronoi, they are all very simple procedural nodes. Then we have a geo primitives. These are the basic shapes that you usually start with, like the mountain or range, crater. We also have some new nodes like the badlands, wordsland, sand. Warps is for displacing and adding randomness to the terrain. Adjustment for fixing your terrain. These are more or less the same, but we also have a multi-combine node now that has, has three inputs instead of only two without counting the mask. 
and uh, we have a profile categories this uh, are for uh, shaping your terrain uh, like adding terrace the filters category is uh, also for uh, modifying the shapes of, of your terrain but more drastically erosion we have uh, mm, the same nodes as before look dev they are still erosion nodes but uh, way more complex these are all news aside from the fold for example we have a canyonizer i'll show you just this one okay as you can see here we have an interesting result and we have some options to customize it then we have the snow category for creating uh, snow on top of your terrain as well as ice snowfall node is the old snow node but now it's called snowfall then we have a water category for creating lakes or uh, coast beaches data for masking color mm, for texturing the nodes are the same as before render we have a new cartography node and a light baking I'll show, you, I'll show you the cartography because it's very very cool I'll connect it with the erosion and as you can see it can be exported as a texture obviously we have many options here and uh, it creates a cartography map with the difference in uh, height and then finally we have the output same as before and utilities we have a new choke point for optimization, I believe. And routines which uh, they were also in the previous version. For the viewport rendering quality itself, we have the new skybox feature that adds the sky. We can also turn off and on the grid. We have some new options for Mm, visualizing for viewport rendering under advanced we have some options for the atmosphere like air density haze ozone the auto exposure and so on the water uh, also it's uh, it's new and uh, we still have a 2d viewport obviously we also have an option for enhanced visibility as you can see it shows the um, it's basically a mask and it serves to more clearly see the height this basically it for the um, for the new version of Gaia I will cover uh, some uh, other stuff in the next videos when we will create our terrain like portals and so on so if you enjoyed this video leave a like subscribe to stay up to date with the latest videos and uh, comments if you have any questions i'll see you in the next one eyes in the sky gazing far into the night i raise my hand to the fire but it's no use cause you can't stop it from shining through it's true